أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. When we begin to do something new, when we start a new venture in life, when we start anything new in our lives, we do so while relying on something or someone. We might rely on our intelligence, upon our physical strength, upon our skills, upon our talent or an ability that we have or we might rely on something external we might rely on our friends our wills on our family on our children but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us bismillah rahman rahim that we begin with in the name of allah the entirely merciful the especially merciful because allah is the one that makes all things possible and it is only by his mercy that we are able to do anything it is only allah that can make it is possible for us to learn all praise is due to allah lord of the world alhamd the meaning of alhamd is praise it comes from gratitude and alhamd is to acknowledge the blessings we praise because we are acknowledging we are grateful for the blessings that we have been given and we have to remember that the blessing could be that we might have asked for it or we might not have asked for it but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed it upon us now the believer he remembers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he gets a blessing whenever something good comes to him he accepts that it is allah that gave him this hamd is a word that pleases allah and it could be something small like a glass of water it could be something very big whatever it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased when uh, when a believer says this and when it is said from the heart we learn in hadith in sahih muslim the prophet said alhamdulillah tamla al mizan Alhamdulillah fills the scales so this is how much value this word adds how much reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives for just saying Alhamdulillah from the heart how often do we think of those that do not have something to eat or drink we take for granted that we have food we take for granted that we have such a variety of things we take for granted that we can have food and drink but it is obligatory upon us that we be grateful for this blessing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the quran by praising himself anything that amazes us we tend to praise and bend down to it allah begins the surah saying alhamdulillah so anything that it is truly beneficial to you it is in fact allah not the sun uh, the trees that sees allah created all these things for you so you could praise allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives us things that we do not even ask for we have our faculties the air that we breathe water animal etc if we did not have animals we could not survive so we have to be grateful to him alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar rahman ar rahim the entirely merciful the especially merciful the entirely merciful the especially merciful 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly merciful to us. He grants us blessings and we sin, yet He continues to grant us blessings and He does not immediately punish us. Ar-Rahman, He is entirely merciful to us and He gives to us whether we show gratitude or not. He continues to give to us all the times. Imagine if you were to do a favor for someone, if you were to give to somebody and they did not show gratitude toward you and again you give to someone and they still did not show gratitude by the third time. There is no way you would want to go back to that person and yet each time we commit a sin, each time we do something wrong, Allah still continues to give to us. Sovereign of the Day of Recompense Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sovereign of the day of recompense. Malik means sovereign, master, complete owner of the day of recompense, the day of the judgment. It means that all things are in his hands. Everything is under his control. On that day, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have authority. That day, whatever a person has done in the dunya, they will recompense, they will be given their results, they will be given their payments. Every Malik is not an owner. He might own a thing, example you have some kings that do not have an authority like the queen, she does not do anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Malik and the owner, he does both. He owns and has the authority to do everything. Nothing will be hidden from Allah. He is the exclusive owner of that day. And uh, this means that all deeds will be completely before him. And not just in terms of physically, not just that physically people will be enclosed. But the deeds, the reality of deeds will be before Allah. The intentions behind them and, uh, and Allah will give recompense accordingly. The rewards for those who did good and the recompense for those who did evil. We learn that everything in Allah's hand. We should not rely on people but turn to Allah because on that day kings, queen, everybody will be the same. We learn we should submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this world, Allah is the owner of this world and the hereafter. A person will be brought forth from the first to the last on that day. It is you we worship and you we ask for help. We only submit to you in worship and seek only your help in everything we do. Everything is in your hands. The first tell us that a Muslim is not allowed to direct any act of worship like prayer and asking for supernatural. Help to anyone other than Allah. The verse connects the heart with Allah and purifies it of pride and the desire to show off. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us and show us the straight path and make it easy for us. Make us firm on it till we meet you. The straight path is Islam, the clear road leading to divine pleasure and heaven showing by Muhammad God's last and final prophet. A slave of Allah cannot be happy and prosperous except by following it.
صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. The path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who are astray. The path followed by those who were blessed, the prophets, the truthful, the martyrs, and the righteous. They are guided. Do not let us follow the path of two. First, those who earned divine anger because they knew the truth but they did not act on it. Second, do not let us follow the path of those who lost their way and were not guided. This is a prayer from a Muslim to purify his heart of stubbornness, ignorance, and misguidance. The first also show Islam is God's greatest blessing. Those who know the way and walk on it are guided and after the prophets they were without doubt the companions of Prophet Muhammad. It is recommended to say Amin after reciting Surah Al-Fatiha in the prayer. Amin means, O oh Allah, please accept.